Now, Germany has unveiled its first national security strategy, years in the making and accelerated following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It includes more money for the military and fulfilling of previous commitments on defence spending made to its NATO allies. The document has fleshed out and added structure to the historic turning point, the Zeitung vendor, announced by Chancellor Scholz last year in the aftermath of the Russian invasion. It's also a strategy for preparing German society for potential conflicts and making the country more resilient. A day of historic firsts in central Berlin. Chancellor Scholz and four of his most important ministers facing the press together. And on the table, the long-awaited very first national security strategy. It comes at a time when the global security environment is especially tense, with Russia's war on Ukraine and heightened geopolitical rivalry between China and the US. Despite all the changes, it remains the central task of the state to ensure the security of its citizens without compromise, because without security there can be no freedom, no stability and no prosperity. And these days that means more than safety in the conventional sense. Security must be defined much more broadly, added German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock. Security in the 21st century means that pharmacies can reliably supply essential medicine. Security means that we can chat with our friends online without being spied on by China and without being manipulated by Russian bots when we scroll through social networks. But security also starts for each of us every morning when we take a shower with clean, hot water, knowing that its quality has been checked. But there is also a commitment to security in the more traditional sense. One very concrete example, the assurance that Germany is striving to meet NATO's 2% defense spending target. That means 2% as a long-term goal. This is linked to other decisions we have made, and I have said to the finance and defense ministers that the German military can rely on this for their planning. The document also takes up the issue of China. The strategy paper refers to it as a competitor and systemic rival. At the same time, it acknowledges the Asian superpower remains a partner, without whom many global challenges and crises cannot be resolved. We clearly see the world completely differently when it comes to the rule of law, human rights and democracy. But when we think of defining the climate crisis, which is the greatest security threat in terms of sustainability, that we must define security in terms of our livelihoods, there we definitely have common ground with China. After decades in which external threats seemed far away and Germany profited from a globalized economy, there has been a rude awakening. The country's first security strategy is a step towards addressing the realities of a new era. OK, let's take a closer look at this with Raphael Bossong from the German Institute of International and Security Affairs. Uh, welcome to DW. What does having a national security strategy now allow Germany to do that it wasn't already doing? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there haven't been actually any really concrete resource commitments yet in this kind of strategy. It is a first and foremost bureaucratic exercise trying to coordinate various ministries, the different parties, that they have a common understanding and that they actually talk more to each other. Um, but one of the original ideas was to have a new also institutional structure, a National Security Council. And that wasn't possible for a whole number of reasons. So we really don't know yet actually what will be the sort of actual outcome of this kind of discussion so far. OK. We'll talk about defence, because obviously that's all about um, uh, the security, but this is a, a, a strategy that goes beyond defence. But we'll, we'll start there. We'll start with this, this commitment to spending 2% of GDP uh, on defence. The same commitment that has been made and massaged so many times uh, before, even back to the days of the former Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel. So what should... Germany's allies take from this latest commitment to, to this 2% mark that has been there for so long? Well, I mean, basically, it's just trying to say we're still believing in it and we have to show, hopefully, in a year's time that we're getting better at closing in on that target. And, of course, the whole context now is different so that there is, after the famous Zeitenwende speech, um, more 
perspective to reaching that target, but we're still far off. So yes, as you rightly say, it's been a target that's been around for a long time. I don't think the strategy makes in itself a difference to reaching it, but it contributes to this kind of sense that yes, Germany is a slow moving tanker, but it is moving. You talked about um, the, the fact that there was this uh, idea of a National Security Council which has been lost. Now that's interesting because who then drives this? Who makes sure the different departments controlled by different parts of this country's fractious governing coalition, who makes sure they don't chip away at the bits they don't like or or increase the bits that they uh, think have been overlooked? Well, this is exactly why it took so long to get this strategy passed. I mean, this is actually already half a year late at least. And, um, well, of course, in the end, the power lies with the chancellor and the chancellery. And in technical terms, there is a National Security Council in Germany, but it doesn't fulfill the function that, say, the US Council does, because technically, at the moment, it's only something doing with arms exports and very narrow mandate. Um, so a sweeping National Security Council that really has this power to coordinate, to really set direction, that has been missing and it hasn't been instituted because the Foreign Office and the Chancellor couldn't really agree on who has the final say. Um, so, yes, okay. ultimately the Chancellor has the power, but there is still this kind of power play between parties and ministries and that's why we haven't got it. So it's already starting to sound like it, it could go off the rails quite quickly. Um, Away from defence, this strategy takes in things like uh, strengthening society to face challenges like cyber threats and climate change. How? Well, I mean, I think taking what I just said also in a positive light, I mean, yes, of course, there has been bureaucratic kind of uh, infighting to some extent, but on the other hand, they have come together on issues. And now there really is this kind of common narrative that is security has to be thought as an integrated whole, that these different elements actually sort of influence each other and that we cannot continue in silos only. And, uh, and so in that sense, yes, um, it's not good enough to only have a military strategy, have a cybersecurity strategy, have something on, um, you know, uh, climate change, but we have to bring them together in a more sustained, coherent approach. Um, so as I said, I think it is the start of the journey. We don't mm -hmm. have everything we wanted, but it can be a chance for something better in the future. This is, this is uh, I'm hearing a phrase from almost my childhood from 20 years ago from Tony Blair's uh, British government talking about um, joined up government, which is what this very much sounds like. China, where is China in all this? Germany's most important export market and of course a rising military power. Well, it's mentioned quite prominently and um, on the one hand, the strategy repeats the actually already, again, quite dated sort of phrase, which is also used at the EU level, China as a partner, as a competitor and a rival. So trying to say, well, of course, in some issues, we still need to cooperate with China, and particularly on climate change. And at the same time, we're an economic competitor. And increasingly, unfortunately, we're also a rival on various value issues and also potentially, ultimately, on military questions. Um, so, so this trias, there's this idea that we can balance this, that we can, don't have to go into full-out confrontation, that we want to have also partnership, um, but it's a tense relationship. And we are still awaiting a separate China strategy, which is coming in early July, and there will be a summit, a German-China summit also. So there will be a lot of eyes on that and see how that actually kind of plays out. That's very clear. Thank you so much for outlining for us. Raphael Bossong from the German Institute of International and Security Affairs. Thank you. Let's look at this with uh, Johann Waderfull, who is a member of the German Parliament for the opposition Christian Democrats and specialises in foreign policy. Welcome to DW. Does Germany need an all-encompassing national security strategy? Oh, there's really a need. There's a necessity to have such a strategy. I welcome that the government realises that and uh, has uh, presented a very good analysis of the threats Germany and Europe is facing. What we are missing are really measures uh, which uh, are necessary, uh, which uh, Germany should, should take. For example, the 2% goal should have been reached uh, in the next year, and Germany is far away. We are at 1.4%. Uh, so there's a lot in concrete to do for this uh, government, and uh, as far as now, I don't see uh, really a concrete strength and will uh, to reach uh, not only the 2% goal, but also to take real concrete measures uh, in order to 
uh, enable Germany and Europe to defend uh, themselves against threats uh, from Russia and from other places of the world. So, in concrete terms, then, what else do you think is missing? Uh, Germany ne uh, uh, should take structural reforms. Uh, first, uh, in the government itself, uh, the government is, uh, has still a department thinking. Uh, each ministry is very much concentrating uh, on uh, the political uh, uh, ideas they, they themselves do have, and they do not cooperate with other ministries. So. So uh, more the joined creation. up thinking, uh, if, if, if you like. A joined up thinking and, of course, uh, the uh, structural change uh, is needed. Uh, not the same uh, National Security Council uh, like the U United States do have, because they have a little bit different uh, okay. system with the president as being command in chief. But I think I, uh, I think uh, uh, a place where where we where we look forward to threats uh, who are coming nearer to Europe and to Germany, understood. and I just where wanna, we I, I, then I'd just like to so, forgive me, for, uh, please, for, for yeah. interrupting. I, I just want to no. pick out another couple of, of things here. We've got the gist of what you were saying there, and I thank you for it. Um, let's uh, a quick word about China. Does this uh, national security strategy strike the right balance between partnership with and protection from China? I only read a very few sentences on China. That's really not enough. The government today uh, has said that, that we will see a, a, a concrete uh, strategy for our China policy, uh, policies uh, uh, in the nearer future. I don't know when. Uh, this is also uh, needed, and Germany has up absolutely to make clear where we are. There is no equidistance between Washington and Beijing. We are absolutely the closest partner to the United States. We are belonging to Europe. We are belonging to the West. That's where we are. And of course, we have to be able to work together with China where China wants to. But at this time, we see more rivalry, more competition uh, with China, and we have to show uh, that uh, we have the ability uh, to build up resilience together, of course, with our friends uh, in, in our partnerships. OK, that's very clear. Thank you so much for out outlining uh, that uh, for us. Johan uh, Wadefel, uh, a member of the German parliament with the opposition uh, Christian Democrats. Thank you. My pleasure. Good evening. I spoke earlier to our chief international editor, Richard Walker, who was at that presentation of this new security strategy. He has more. Well, Claire, I think maybe the, the one kind of almost simple message that, that people around the world can latch on to, and particularly here in Western Europe and uh, in the broader West, is Germany in black and white in this very formal document, the first national security strategy that it has ever published, uh, announcing that it will meet the NATO target of spending 2% of its economic output, of its GDP, um, on defence. Now, the background to this is this was a target that was actually agreed to by member states of NATO way back in 2014, so almost a decade ago. Um, and Germany, but not just Germany, but many countries are far short of it, but, but particularly Germany is still far short of that goal. And that's despite the fact that Olaf Scholz last year, just after the, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, made a big announcement that Germany would spend 100 billion euros investing in its military to, to bring its military up to standard, to make up from, uh, for those many years of, of, of underspending. And that money still hasn't trickled through into the, into the, the, the spending figures uh, that are coming up year on year. Now we have from the finance minister saying that he expects that 2% target to be hit next year and we have it in black and white in this national security strategy, I think that's something that is going to be welcomed very much uh, within NATO. Absolutely. The spending goal has long been a demand of allies. Do you think this also means that Germany is stepping into more of a leadership role on the international stage? Well, I think that's the direction it's trying to signal here. And just no, don't forget, I mean, 2% of GDP sounds like a very kind of dry idea, but it took on this hugely important political and symbolic role, particularly during the years of Donald Trump in the White House, when he was serially bashing uh, Germany and other European partners for underspending on defence, even suggesting that uh, uh, the United States might one way walk away from, one day walk away from NATO, which would be an absolute disaster, certainly for countries like Na Germany that depends so much on NATO 
NATO for their defence. So very much Germany sort of signalling to other NATO partners and to the wider world that it's taking defence more seriously, but not just in spending on, on the military, but also in this kind of the banner term of resilience, of trying to kind of toughen up its society for potential conflict scenarios. And what about the German position toward China? It seemed to get rather limited attention in this strategy. That's right. There's not a whole lot on China in this strategy. It repeats this idea that China is at the one hand a partner, a competitor and a systemic rival, but suggesting that competition and rivalry is heating up, which it certainly is between the United States and China. There's a lot of focus on where Germany is positioning itself at the moment vis-a-vis -vis China. We have Chinese ministers expected here in Berlin next week for consultations with their government counterparts. And in two weeks, we're expecting uh, uh, what their latest report Report suggesting in around two weeks we might be getting um, Germany's new strategy on China. So separate from this national security strategy, but connected to it in a couple of weeks. That's when we expect to see a bit more about just what a line Germany is deciding to draw uh, in its relationship with China, which has been so controversial in recent years. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you then. Thank you so much. That's DW's chief international editor, Richard Walker.